एवरीवन हाउ आर यू डूइंग माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू ऑल आर कीपिंग ग्रेट सो देर इज अ चैप्टर कॉल्ड अ सेक्सुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स व्हिच इज सॉर्ट ऑफ कंफ्यूजिंग बिकॉज़ ऑफ लॉट ऑफ एग्जांपल्स सो टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी विल सी व्हिच आर ऑल इंपॉर्टेंट एग्जांपल्स दैट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर सेक्सुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग मच टाइम लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो before getting into the uh, you know some of the examples of different types of pollination let's see what are the what are the different examples for different sexuality that we get to see so let's start with bisexual flowers which is sort of easy so some of the examples for bisexual flower which actually makes the plant bisexual as well so the examples are hibiscus sweet potatoes and coming to the next that is sexual i mean unisexual flower so when i say unisexual flower here it is the bisexual plant which means there is going to be a plant which will be having different types of you know sexuality that is it will have both male as well as female flowers so this condition if you see some of the examples are here that is maize coconut cucurbita so here we will be able to see bisexual plant with the unisexual flowers and the last that is unisexual plant which will have either male or female flowers so some of the examples can be dates and papaya so this is some of the these are these are some of the examples for uh, sexuality and moving further so uh, we will be studying regarding ovule in this particular chapter so different plants will be having different number of ovules in one flower so if the flower is going to have just one ovule they will be able to give rise to one seed right so some of the examples for one ovule would be wheat rice mango and it's very simple to remember and you can actually uh, remember some of your experience which means like you know if you just if you remember you eating mango you can just see one seed in one mango so that's how uh, this can be the example and coming to many ovules which means you know that that ovules will be giving rise to seeds right so uh, many ovules which means many seeds so when we eat papaya watermelon we get to see many seeds in a fruit so they would be having many ovules the flower of this particular plant would be having many ovules and another example is orchids moving further viability of pollens now what is the meaning of viability viability means ability to germinate okay so there are different types of pollen grains which will be able to show different viability okay so some of them would be having very good viability which means they can germinate the pollen grains can be germinated um, after months or something and some will lose their viability within an hour or something for example if you see rice and wheat so their viability is less than 30 minutes but if you see some of the pollen grains of rosaceae our rose belong to this family leguminosae and you know which are the leguminous plants which belong to this family solanaceae yeah uh potato belong to this particular family right so they will be having more viability the the seeds or in, sorry the pollen grains would be having uh more than months they would be viable okay so this are some of the examples for uh you know different types of viability that we get to see in the pollen grains and the next seed viability so just before some time we saw pollen grains viability so similarly we get to see seeds viability which means the seeds will be able to germinate okay uh, they would be able to germinate for some time or sometimes they would be showing dormancy that is they can stay viable for longer time so we will be discussing the examples for this so lupinus arcticus so they are able to show viability for 10000 years basically in this particular duration they were they were dormant so this they found in arctic region lupinus arcticus and then phoenix dactylifera yeah the scientific name of dates so they were able to show viability of 2000 years 
so these are some of the examples for seed and under seed viability we are supposed to discuss these moving further structure of the pistil so few things you would have already studied in the chapter uh, morphology in flowering plants or some of the chapters of class 11 standard some of the examples you would have studied already okay but here we are discussing the examples that you have to remember uh, which comes under sexual reproduction in flowering plants okay so there are two types of you know structure of pistil that we get to see that is syncarpus and apocarpus so syncarpus means what syn means what fused so carpus is fused what is the meaning of carpus carpus means carpel that is the female reproductive structure carpels can also be called as pistil right so syncarpus which means the carpels are fused so such condition we get to see in papaver hibiscus you know papaver right what is papaver what is the common name of papaver you already know hibiscus we know so in the case of hibiscus it's sort of confusing to um, you know remember because uh, if you just see the uh, stigma of the you know hibiscus pistil it's actually free it is not it doesn't look fused but we are not supposed to see the stigma we are supposed to see the carpel especially the how the ovary is so if you just do the dissection of the pistil of the hibiscus we get to see that their carpels is fused over here right so a power and <clears throat> hibiscus is example for syncarpus now coming to apocarpus michaelia is the example that is champak so over here we are able to see the carpels are free okay that is from the base itself we are able to see the carpels are free something like this the diagram we get to see in your ncrt right so these all are individual carpels being free carpels being free next coming to types of flowers so basically there are two types of flowers open and close so chasmogamous means open flower most of the flowers that we get to see around are open flowers right like hibiscus and so on clistogamous means closed flowers so in the grassaceae family we are able to see that is the, in the grasses we get to see clistogamous flowers but there are some of the plants which are able to show both chasmogamous that is the open flower and the closed flowers right and examples are camellia viola oxalis so these are the three plants where we get to see both closed closed as well as open flowers moving further <clears throat> so we will be studying uh, different types of pollination different agents that will be involved in pollination in this particular chapter so let's get started with the water pollinated plants that is the plants which get pollinated with the help of water so some of the example are hydrilla valisneria zostera okay so it's little difficult to remember these you know scientific names so that's why uh, i have given certain hack to remember so hell wall hell wall heart zelensky is a sort of i guess equation that we get to see in chemistry you might have heard this particular you know term in chemistry so use this to remember this example or if you do not know or if you do not want to remember in this way you can simply remember as hydrilla valisneria and zostera so which use water for pollination okay but there are certain aquatic plants which do not use water for pollination but they live in water so some of the some of the examples for such plants are water hyacinth water lily even though they live in water even though they are aquatic they do not get pollinated for what you know with the help of water instead they use insects for pollination they take the help of insects for pollination and the last oh not not last we have a lot of other things to discuss as well wind pollination that is with the help of air in such plants in few plants we get to see pollination right so when it comes to abiotic factors wind is going to be that agent which is being 
extensively used for pollination and water is the least so some of the examples are going to be corn cob and grasses so in this case you get to see non sticky pollen grains and all such stuffs it's going to be free long enough and they produce a lot of pollen grains as well and coming to biotic factors so there are different types of biotic factors that there are different types of animals birds ants like insects in general animals which are involved in pollination starting with ornithophily ornitho means bird right ornithology means study of birds ornitho means bird so ornithophily is pollination with the help of birds entomophily entomology means insects study of insects so bees ants they belong to uh, this particular type of pollinations as they are insects we are able to see pollination with the help of these insects and chiropterophily that is pollination with the help of bats like that we have um, malacophily which i haven't written over here now <clears throat> if pollination is specifically with the help of ant it's called as myrmecophily okay pollination with the help of snail is malacophily so apart from these types of pollination there are other animals other agents that will be uh, you know you, that will be involved in pollination and some of the examples are garden lizard gecko and lemur and there are there is another small concept called as uh, rewards for pollinate pollinators that reward can be nectar or uh, you know it can be the space that will be provided by the flower for laying eggs for some of the insect so in such case the examples can be yucca and moth so <clears throat> yucca is a you know plant moth is an insect basically this will be laying egg in yucca and yucca will be providing some space to lay the eggs and uh, also we can see similar in fig and wasp i mean this is a type of mutual relationship both of them will be benefited moth or wasp will be getting the space to lay the eggs whereas the or, and also protection yucca fig they will be you know getting pollinated fine moving further <clears throat> different types of fruit we will be studying about true fruits and false fruit and we can easily identify true fruits true fruits are the one the fruit that has been produced from the ovary so most of the fruit that we eat for example mango so that is a true fruit but there are some of the fruit which is not been developed from the ovary for example apple cashew even strawberry so the thalamus is actually in the case of apple cashew the thalamus is you know being uh, developed as a fruit and we will also see something called as perisperm where the nucellus that is present in the ovule they will be remaining uh, you know during when the seeds are present so that will form something called as perisperm and this we get to see in beets and uh, in black pepper so these are the examples now coming to a different types of you know fruits so the fruit that we discussed before some time was nothing but uh, depending on the ovary depending on from where exactly it has been originated but now what we are discussing is regarding uh, depending on the pistil right okay so coming to the simple fruits so simple fruits has been developed from syncarpus multicarpellary uh, flowers where the carpels are fused but they are mini and examples are going to be pea guava mango so here in one flower the carpels are going to be mini and they are fused and the second situation is aggregate fruit so it, it will look as if it is like you know aggregate of many fruits so why so because even though one flower is involved the carpels which are many they are free so cause of the free carpels it looks like aggregate of fruits and examples are going to be custard apple strawberry composite or multiple fruit 
so which means here the flowers are many basically we will be able to see such type of fruit when the fruit is been originated from the inflorescence itself not just one ovary of the flower but instead of which entire inflorescence which will have many flowers that will be giving rise to a fruit so this situation we get to see in mulberry and jackfruit so the big jackfruit when we just cut it into two piece we are able to see many fruits inside that is actually cause of the presence of many flowers that is from the inflorescence we get to see production of the fruit fine now the last concept is parthenocarpy so parthenocarpy is nothing but when the fruit is getting produced but without fertilization so since there is no fertilization the seeds would be absent here and naturally parthenocarpy can be seen in banana okay now we will be able to induce parthenocarpy okay but in general naturally parthenocarpy means cause of no fertilization there is no seed so fruit without seed is parthenocarpy and there is another thing called as apomixis which is a type of asexual reproduction that we get to see in sexually reproducing plants so basically here what happens is there is going to be a fruit there is going to be a seed there is going to be a embryo but there wouldn't be any fertilization so here no fertilization no seed here no fertilization but there is a seed okay so this has been extensively used by farmers to you know produce for the or for the production of certain type of if i want a type a particular breed of a plant to be produced i use apomixis because cause of no fertilization there is no mixing of genes over here whatever character i i have seen in plant a okay if i use it if i use apomixis to reproduce show the reproduction in plant a the plant b also would be having the same character because of apomixis it is it's like a asexual reproduction okay so examples we get to see this situation this condition in grassesi that is in uh, grasses and asteraceae family so this is uh, what i wanted to discuss now coming to different types of seeds albuminous and albuminous uh, non albuminous i hope you all know what is albuminous seeds the one which where we will be able to see albuminous means we will be able to see the endosperm over here so endosperm will be persistent will be still present okay but in non albuminous we won't be able to see endo endosperm because it it would be uh, used by embryo okay so albuminous seeds examples can be coconut so the kernels of the coconut that we eat right so that is nothing but endosperm and in the castor even though it is a dicot we will be able to see in castor right and uh, wheat maize barley which are monocots so usually albuminous seeds are seen in monocots because endosperm will be persistent usually in monocots but exception is castor non albuminous in dicot because in dicots endosperm wouldn't be persistent it would be used up okay example can be all the dicot plants that you know like pea groundnut beans fine so this is all i wanted to discuss regarding all important examples from the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants so let's meet in the coming video until then bye